Welcome to Interviews with Innocence, a podcast about spirituality, consciousness, and exploring the wisdom our children bring into this world. I believe that our very young children are our greatest teachers. After all, they're the masters of living in the present moment, bubbling in unconditional love, enjoying the messiness of life, and curious about the universe in all its dimensions. The pure essence that young children exhibit lives within all of us. My hope is that these interviews will help us discover, embrace, and connect with the sacred core of childhood that resides within each of our hearts. I am your host, Marla Hughes. I am super excited to announce that my first children's book, Love Magic, is now on Amazon for purchase. Love Magic is a heartfelt and magical story about the enduring power of love. It's about a little girl named Charlie who has a loved one who passes, and her journey addresses the universal question of how do we stay connected with our loved ones when they pass on. It gently touches upon the magical ways in which our loved ones can continue to guide us through nature, music, love, and everything in between. I hope you will check it out on Amazon and possibly purchase it. And if you do, please leave me a review. Without further ado, let's go to the next interview. Today, I am so excited to have Paula Wilkes on the program. Paula has been an educator educator and coach for more than 40 years. She earned her BA at UCLA and then her master's and PhD from the University of Oregon. During the first 25 years of her career, she was a public school teacher in Eugene, Oregon. During that time, she worked with gifted students, both within a heterogeneous classroom and as a gifted specialist. For nearly 10 years, she worked as a professor of education at Pacific University's Eugene campus, where she created and coordinated the Center for Gifted Education, and where she taught gifted education and general education courses. Welcome to the program, Paula. Thank you. Great to be speaking with you today. Yes, yes. It's so great to have you, have you here. So just to jump right in, I know in our pre-conversation, we talked a little bit about something that I haven't talked about on this show, and that is guided writing and in communicating with a spirit guide. So first of all, um, could you share with us what a spirit guide is, how you met your spirit guide, and give us um, maybe a couple of examples an example of the guided writing? Okay, I would love to do that. So a spirit guide is a mentor or a friend on the other side who is looking out for your higher good, trying to help you realize whatever it is you've come here to do, even if you don't realize that yourself. And so I have become acquainted with a guide I call Holly. And she's recently told me she's part of uh, what she calls the collective wisdom, Mm -hmm. so that in the way that we're all interconnected with each other, there is a higher way of knowing that gets us out of our egoic minds and our own problems um, so that we can we can have the greatest impact um, with our within our own lives and for the lives of others as well. And so as I look back on it, and we can talk about this um, in a little bit, but I realize now how I was guided even as a child and guided as a teacher and how I'm being guided now, um, but was not aware of it earlier. And so when you suggested that maybe I find an example of that guided writing, this is what I pulled out. Holly said, most of you have noticed that your news reporting is largely focused on hardwiring your brain for negativity. That night after night and day after day bombardment of negativity makes it difficult for viewers to experience much happiness in their waking hours. We will encourage you to take a few moments each day to hardwire your brain for happiness. 
Build your awareness of the beauty and wonder around you. Hold your gaze for twice as long as you normally would and pull that feeling into your heart. Just a moment of happiness can't possibly outweigh the negativity being fed you on a daily basis, but perhaps you'll eventually choose to spend more time velcroing positive experiences than negative ones. It is really your choice. You don't have to be a victim to the negativity of media or of others. So I let that sit and was thinking, okay, so so that's will be what I share with, wow. with Marla. But then after recently listening to one of your other podcasts, I started getting these nudgings from Holly as I do from time to time where there's a topic or a theme and she keeps coming back to it and it come, kept coming back to children and there's something you need to say about children. So I sat down and did the guided writing with Holly and this is what she would have preferred I would have shared. It says, it is vital that a new focus be placed on the happiness of your planet's children. In many places in your world, children grow up with nature, song, play as the backdrop for their learning. But in countries where test scores, grades, academic achievement are the symbols of success, you are breaking down the natural playfulness, merrymaking, and problem-solving abilities of your children. You are breaking down the child's connection to spirit. A group of people could show their devotion to children by creating schools that have plants and animals and opportunities for creative play. The adults in the community would value teachers by paying them at the same level they pay highly valued individuals. But in your North American culture, too many adults are willing to warehouse their children to fit into the status quo. If you wanted the children of your culture to grow up to be compassionate, empathic, creative, problem-solving members of your society, you would have that rising to the level of issues such as global warming. When the focus is not on the happiness of the younger members of your culture, it is easy to see how the health of your planet is also not a priority. It seems to us that because the adults of your country had to endure 12 years of a basic education and you feel that you turned out okay, then the same education is fine for this generation. Well, we would respond, the adults of North America are not okay. And all you have to do is look at how many are on antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications and modalities. And your children, particularly the highly sensitive and the spiritually sensitive young souls are not okay either. Not only are they not happy, Many of them are losing their connection to your planet and their purposes for being there. These children need your support because they are the ones who have the potential to solve so many of the problems currently facing your nations and planet. Wow. So Holly let me know when I was feeling like I don't know if I want to share that. That's really pretty heavy. And she was insistent upon your, your podcast is the perfect place for this because Marla, this is what you're trying to do. You are trying to wake people up to, you know, the innocence of these children that Unfortunately, maybe people just aren't even realizing how we're robbing children of their potential to stay connected to spirit. Right. And so I decided just to go ahead and, oh, and read it. Thank you so much. That was just, wow. That was just amazing. Wow. So when you connect with Holly, Paula, um, do you, are you in a meditative state or, or what, um, how do you prepare? Is it kind of like automatic writing? Would you use the same words? Okay. Yes. And, and what happened at the beginning um, was I, I got the feeling that I was getting nudges yeah. from someplace and I decided 
I would try to do some of this guided writing and, and it was so profound. I'm someone who doesn't like to write. I wrote a PhD and it was difficult and, <laughs> and I just don't, I just don't think and organize thoughts in that way. And so with Holly, it comes out without me having to make any corrections. It sounds like she's come up with a great opening. There's always some kind of an ending. It's it's profound. So very different than if I was going to sit and try to write this myself. Right. So I did what I decided to do was to do 365 days of writing. And so every morning I either started writing myself about an issue or a question and then just would let it go and it just would flow and flow and my hands sometimes would even be tired because the ideas were coming out so almost faster than I could write. And um, and it, it just became a habit that I love. And so I do it almost every morning. I have a routine where I do stretching and Qigong and then I sit down and sometimes with some nice music in the background, um, I, I just start having this guided communication with Holly and it's, it's become a relationship now. You know, the thing that's so interesting, when you and I spoke for the first time, something got triggered in me from something Holly said to you and Holly afterward Hat, was writing to me saying, I needed to start putting these ideas down where other people could read them. And so shortly after you and I spoke, I created a uh, sound bridge coaching WordPress. And so now I share on a topic every week, uh, something that Holly is encouraging me to uh, write about. Right. So thank you. Thank you yes. for the inspiration that came. Wow. You. Wow. That's, um, that's just wonderful. Thank you so much, Paul and Holly for those beautiful messages. And next week, Paula will be back to talk about her work with exceptionally gifted children and others, and also to talk a little bit more about her spiritual journey. I hope you can join us. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening in today. If you want to learn more about the show, you can find us at interviewswithinnocence.com and on Facebook or Instagram at Interviews with Innocence. Please write me a message. Tell me what you liked and let me know what else you would like to hear. I would love to hear from you. And if you liked what you heard, please leave us an iTunes rating and review. It helps other listeners find the show. Thank you.